We are on our second video for Prusa Slicer on this and 3D printing. In this video we are again going to be using our Itopia remote login software and we're going to continue from the previous video where we set up our configuration for Prusa so that we can bring in our file. Uh, at the end of this video one of the goals is going to be getting this video file to our thumb to our SD card into a card reader and into our Chromebook so that we can save to here. So we'll be hopefully going to that step at the end of this video so you'll be able to bring it to the 3D printer. So we're going to go into our inventor. I have a simple project here designed a little key tag type thing called widget and it's saved as an IPT file for inventor but we need to get this saved into a file type that we can bring into Prusa. Uh, so we're going to go file export CAD format and we're going to choose the file type here of STL. Uh, we can use the same name if we want to, that's perfectly fine, uh, but we need to get to that STL file type. We're going to be saving this into our Google Drive, into our class folder, and I called it a practice project folder. That's where the IPT file is that we can't see right now, uh, but we're going to put it right next to it. The first time we do this, uh, potentially every time, we want to double check this. We want to go to options and make sure this is set up for millimeters. Sometimes it defaults to centimeters, so we're going to want to make sure that that's set up for millimeters just in case. And that should be it. We can go ahead and save that file. We've now saved that into our Google Drive. If I go to a tab on the Chromebook, I'll see practice project, and there's the IPT and I assume the STL, there it is, if I refresh, shows up right next to it. So back to Itopia, we're done with Inventor for now. We've already made the part. We're gonna bring that part into Prusa. We have our MK3S Plus printer selected for this particular print, not the MK4. We're gonna to go to standard, uh, actually we're gonna use Overture PLA, generic probably is just fine between these two on what you pick. Uh, I'll go ahead and do generic, shouldn't matter. And we're going to be 0.2 quality on most of the prints we do. So we're going to go ahead and import our STL file. Import STL. We're going to go to Google Drive to find that folder. So my drive, class of whatever class it's in, the project folder, and there's the STL file, STLs. Open it up and it brings it right in. We can take a look at the size of this file over here in the XYZ. It says it's uh, two and a half inches long by one and a half inches deep by uh, looks like 0.175 inches tall, which is about right for what I remember drawing that as. So it brought it in the correct size. That's great information. I can drag this around the bed and print it over here or here, or I could bring in multiple copies of this and print a couple at a time. I usually print right in the center of the bed on small parts. If this part were to come in the wrong way the first time, uh, we are going to want to make sure it's selected and we can choose rotate and we could just grab these bars and try to move them into the snaps of exactly 90 degrees, whatever it might be. Let's say we really messed it up because we can't figure out which way to rotate it. Hopefully you can. We can also choose this button here, place on face. I like this one a lot because we just go grab a face. So I want it face there down. And when I click off, <clears throat> it is now on the table. Doesn't matter if it's rotated upside down this way, as long as the letters are up, it will print just fine. Um, but that is how we can easily do some rotates uh, to move that part around. I'm going to go ahead and delete it out just so I can bring it in the right way. Not that it really matters, uh, but for the demonstration purposes, it's nice to see it the right way. Uh, we want to save this Prusa file, not the 3D print file yet, the slice. We want to save this actual file in case we want to make changes after we print it and reprint it. We can open it up again. So now that it's in here, we're going to go file, save, project, as. Make sure it's in our practice folder. I can call it the same file again, even though it's the same name as the other ones. It's a different file type and hit save. So now we have the CAD IPT file called widget keychain one, the STL file that we can bring into Prusa widget keychain one. If I hit refresh, 
Here is now the Prusa file, widget keychain one, um, because they're all different file names. And you already see, we're already getting a bunch of files. There's one more file yet we're gonna create for the slicing eventually. With this uh, selected, we could say, okay, we got 15% infill. We've got the right printer, material and quality. We theoretically could slice it. So let's go ahead and hit slice now. And that file is now layered like a loaf of bread of how it's gonna print it. So if I come way down here to layer number one and zoom in a little bit, when it 3D prints that out, that's the first layer. It does some nice color coding here in Prusa to tell you uh, what infill is and outside layers and all that stuff. If we come up to the next layer, you can see it changes direction. Looks like it's doing four solid layers, one, two, three, four, and then it starts the infill. So here's a whole bunch of infill layers, does like a squiggly pattern. And then here's one, two, three, four, four, five solid layers on the top and then it starts the letters and works the letters up. And you can see that whole pattern as we go through. Now, if we wanna change a setting, let's say we wanna change infill from 15% to 40% and make it really strong, we can do that. And when we hit slice, you gotta do it every time, you can now see the infill is really tight. It's a much stronger file. This particular file is gonna take 34 minutes to print. If we go back down to 15% and hit slice, it's now 27 minutes to print. So you can see uh, through some simple changes how long it's gonna print and how strong it's gonna look like. There's other settings we can do. We'll get deeper from how many walls and perimeters. So if we change perimeters from two to four perimeters, and we come back and hit slice, it's gonna make four layers around the outside now instead of two layers around the outside in that process. It didn't change much time about the print, which is nice but there's lots of different settings we can tweak and change. Once you're happy with the setting changes, we're then going to export the code so we can get it to that SD card. Again, we're on a remote computer somewhere, so we need to get that code into Google Drive so that we can then come to your Chromebook and download it to the SD card. So we're gonna do export. Actually, let's save the file first, save project. So that's the Prusa file. Now we're going to go export G code. We want it in the same folder. It goes widget keychain one, and then it puts some nice information here. So it's saying 0.4 nozzle, 0.2 millimeter quality, PLA material on what printer, MK3S, and it says it's going to take 27 minutes. It's really nice to keep this information because if you're going to have a whole bunch of 3D print files, you know what printer it's going on, what material, how long it was, and so on. So it's good to have that. Maybe you've sent it a couple of times. Maybe you would wanna go revision B if it's the second or third or fourth attempt at printing this. Maybe you wanna put a revision in there as well when you save it, because you might have multiple versions of this in there. Hit save and it says finished. So now it made that slice file or the G code file in our Google Drive might take a moment to get here hit refresh a couple of times there it is um, so this right here is that G code file and that is on Google Drive so this here again is the tab for the remote software right for that computer somewhere else this is the tab on your Chromebook of Drive that's open so now that I have that I'm gonna go and get our SD card and our SD card reader and I'm gonna plug that into the Chromebook or into the computer that you're using. That's now plugged in. And with that done, you should be able to go to a folder button of some sort and get to your Chromebook drive, right? And you can see the USB there uh, that we're gonna be using. So now we come over to our tab with Google. We're gonna take that G code file we are going to download it and that's done and it should have put it into a downloads folder so here's your downloads folder on the Chromebook we're going to take that control C or right click copy control C go into our USB control V or right click paste and now 
that file is on your SD card. As soon as I unplug that out of the Chromebook, that drive should disappear because it's no longer connected. And we are now able to take that card back to the 3D printers. So in this short video, hopefully you have seen how we can bring our inventor files to an STL into Google Drive, open that up in uh, Prusa Slicer, choosing the correct settings of infill, the printer, the material, the quality, maybe doing some simple tweaks. We'll get into more videos of that later. And then exporting that G code back to Google Drive. Once you've gone to Google Drive, download that to the Chromebook and throw it on the SD card. I look forward to seeing all of the fun prints you guys and girls come up with. Um, please watch future videos on how to take those files off the SD card and actually start printing. Welcome. Today we are